everybody, my name is Erica, and today I'm bringing you another what I've been watching recently. Okay, so it's been a long time since I posted one, and there are a lot of movies and shows I've been watching, but I'm not gonna talk about all of them that I've watched, like, it goes back for a while, so I'm just gonna do, like, most recently, including some, like, holiday movies. Okay, so let's just get right into it. Okay, the first TV show that I finished that I never talked about was The Haunting of Hill House. And if you remember, I am not a fan of the book. The book kind of left me a little confused and disappointed, but the show I was pretty blown away by. I absolutely loved the characters and the story. Okay, I'm not gonna obviously spoil anything. Main issue that I had with it was that like, the last, okay, so the first five episodes were really well done. The writing was clear, like everything, it was like creepy and scary. But then as we moved further along into the show, like the last few episodes, I felt like they were rushing it. Like I just felt like they were putting so much into it at the end that it just kind of got like hokey. Like obviously it's not real, but I don't like when the scary things don't feel, <laughs> this is going to sound messed up. I like when like haunted things or like ghost stories, I like when they feel like they could have been possible. And initially that one felt like real, like this haunted house, you know, it's kind of possessed and it's like haunting these children and everything and like it grows up with them and all this stuff. But then by the end, like all this stuff just started happening and it just started to feel like too much. And I know I'm gonna get a lot of like, there's a lot of disagreements, but I, I enjoyed the show and I really loved the actors. I mean, Victoria Pedretti, I'm just obsessed with her. I love Nell so much. And I just, I love that character a lot, like she means the world to me and I just felt really connected to her story and just how Victoria portrayed her. And I don't know, I, I love that aspect about it, but again, it just kind of felt like by the end they just were rushing with the last few episodes and just threw all this stuff at us at once. Like we had the build up. I love the first few episodes where we're getting to know the characters, them as children and then them as adults, their struggles and like them being scared and what's been haunting them and how they each have specific moments in the house that just has followed them all these years. And I mean, it's very sad. It's a very sad show. Ugh, like just devastating and it's so dark and just pretty overwhelming at times and I love the writing of it but again by the end I just felt like they threw so much at us we had this nice build up of getting to know the characters and then they're all of a sudden like okay we have to get this storyline going and just all this stuff has to happen right now I think had the show been longer like had we had more episodes instead of I think it was just 10 I think maybe they could have done a little better with it I just felt like it was rushed honestly Anyway, that's all I have for that one. I love the show. I do really enjoy it. I love the acting. It's just beautiful. It, uh, the music is lovely and I, I don't know, I really enjoyed it, but again, like I was kind of, I wasn't really scared by it or anything. There are a lot of jump scare moments and like it is pretty creepy. There's a lot of like chilly moments that you're just kind of like, ooh, but overall, I mean, I, I liked it, but it wasn't like my favorite. Okay, the next thing we're going to start talking about are some like Christmas movies that I watched. So I went home for the holidays because my work closed and everything and so my sisters and I watch a lot of movies together. <laughs> we watched a lot of Hallmark movies obviously, but there was a really funny moment that I have to talk about. Not funny, but I mean a lot of these movies were filmed over quarantine, like over this pandemic, so they had to take a lot of precautions and there's this moment where there's a kiss scene and it was so awkward. Usually for kiss scenes, the camera's like obviously like over the shoulder or like you can see their lips connect or it's like, you know, facing the people. Like you can just, you, you, you can see them kissing. For this one, you like see them lean in for the kiss and then it like cuts out so you can't see them like the lips touching. I was like, why was that so awkward? Turns out they had a kiss between plexiglass, so it made sense, but I was like, what? Okay, moving on. That's not the one I'm talking about. Okay, we're going to be talking about the movie Happiest Season starring Kristen Stewart. <laughs> okay, so there are a lot of mixed feelings about the ending for this movie and just like mixed feelings in general about this movie because it is following this girl who has not come out to her family yet and she brings her girlfriend home for Christmas and they have to hide who they are and hide their relationship and it's very awkward and uncomfortable. Yes, I get that. 
Totally. I completely understand why people are not happy with another coming out story. It's very heteronormative and it's not really fair for people because they want to be able to see a happy lesbian couple who's out doing whatever they want because they are loved no matter what. I totally understand that. I get both sides. But I actually really did enjoy this movie except the ending. Okay, so we're following Abby who goes home with her girlfriend Harper and Harper has not come out to her family. Her parents are very like well known in their town and the dad I think is trying to become like mayor or something I forget but he is very well known they're very well liked but he's always had these high expectations for his daughters that they have to meet and they just never felt like they could get his love if they didn't meet these expectations so in a spur of the moment romantic scene Harper invites Abby home for the holidays and then the next day she's like okay actually don't come home and like Abby's very excited about it she's like yeah it's gonna be fine we're gonna have a great time and then Harper ends up telling her my parents don't know that I'm gay like they don't know I have a girlfriend and like so you're already like okay great this is gonna be awkward so Abby has to pretend she's like an orphan I mean she is an orphan but she doesn't have anyone else to spend the holidays with so she just has to pretend she's Harper's roommate and obviously things are awkward things get kind of tense between them we bump into two of Harper's exes one being this guy who I don't remember his name we also have Aubrey Plaza who is playing Riley you guys, let me just fangirl for a moment. I love Aubrey Plaza. She's just so pretty and just like, I'm just a lesbian fangirl over her. And she played Riley and she was actually just the best part of this whole film. Harper's still like being awkward, trying to hide everything, and she really doesn't spend time with Abby that much. It's just really sad. I mean, I'm not gonna go into a whole like spoilery thing because you all should watch this movie, but the ending I was just not excited about. Anyway, that movie had a lot of mixed opinions, but I actually really did enjoy it. I mean, it is another coming out story, very heteronormative as I said, but it is really good. I highly recommend you check it out. I mean, I obviously get why it's problematic, but I did actually really enjoy it as somebody who is a lesbian and who really needed some Christmas movies. <laughs> okay, the next holiday movie I'm going to be talking about is Jingle Jangle. This movie I absolutely loved. So Jingle Jangle, A Christmas Journey is a beautiful, beautiful Christmas film on Netflix. You, you have to watch it. You have to. The music, the production design, the costumes, everything about it is absolutely beautiful just stunning. I can't even explain it. It's so wonderfully crafted. The storyline is so sweet and sad, but beautiful, and it's just the best. Okay, so we're following this family. His name's Geronicus. He is an inventor. He finally gets the last piece for this huge invention that'll change everything. He's an incredible toy maker, and uh, it's just, he's amazing. Then his apprentice ends up stealing his design and using it for himself to make his own toy shop and just become the most famous toy maker ever. And so all these years pass, Geronicus isn't really into inventing anymore. He doesn't really have any ideas and they're like gonna close his shop, which has become more of like a knickknack sort of place, like antiques and stuff. His granddaughter ends up coming to stay with him because she like invites herself. She's so cute and sweet. She's really smart. She loves inventing things. She admires him so deeply. And so she ends up kind of saving him and saving the toy shop and just giving him new purpose and new life, like invigorating so much more in him that it's just so beautifully done. She's trying to help him build this little robot and it's just so cute and precious and I love this movie. I love the music. It's honestly, I think I liked it more than The Greatest Showman, which I feel like it's like compared to a lot, but I mean, it's very different, but it's just, it, that's kind of the theme it reminded me of, just like that musical style and the dancing, the choreography. It's just so magical and beautiful. 10 out of 10, highly recommend that film. It's just the most wondrous Christmas movie I've watched in a really long time and the music, it's so original and just well done and Cannot recommend it enough. Okay, the next TV show that I finished was The Haunting of Blind Manor. This one took me a while to get through only because I went home and like we were watching a lot of Christmas movies, so I didn't finish it till I came back here. Okay, I definitely liked Blind Manor way more than I liked Haunting of Hill House. In this story, we're following Danny, who is becoming this like nanny to this really wealthy family. The kids' parents have passed away, so they are orphans, but they're being raised by they have like a couple people in the house with them. We have a gardener there and just someone who like cooks for them and just all this stuff. Danny has a pretty rough past and then she meets Jamie who's the gardener and like I can't even spoil anything but I loved Fly Manor a hundred thousand times more than I liked Hill House. Victoria Pedretti is just amazing. I don't know it's not I don't I didn't I feel like it was scarier honestly than Hill House somehow 
like not but it was also way sadder <laughs> i was literally bawling at the end of this show and i can't say why obviously but this show wrecked me and i honestly just want to rewatch it just for the last episode because i like want to lead back up to it and have all my feelings hurt again <laughs> it was so beautifully done i'm obsessed with it like i could ramble about it all day i just the acting is incredible the storyline concept the only episode i had issues with was i think episode seven again some things just kind of felt weird to me like just kind of like really like it just i don't like hokey things like i like when it feels genuine and honest but i know that's like it's a ghost story but it's just I don't know, something about it was kind of weird, but then you get episode 8 and 9, it's just, you're blown away. But they're both really well done, and the writing is amazing, and the kid actors are so cute and so talented. It's just wonderful. I just, I loved it a lot. Okay, <laughs> now I'm just rambling. Okay, the next movie that I've watched recently was Run, which has Sarah Paulson in it. So good. Okay, so we start out with this woman who I believe was in like a bad accident, car accident maybe, and she goes to check on her baby who ended up like being born while she was, I think, probably in surgery or something. She goes to check on her and the nurses are all standing there and she's like, she gonna be okay? And then she starts crying. And then we cut to this screen saying all these health conditions that this child is going to have. She was gonna be paralyzed, have diabetes, I think like heart arrhythmia? I can't remember exactly what it was, so I apologize for medical people out there. But just all, this whole long list of all these issues this girl was going to grow up with. So fast forward all these years and we're getting ready for the daughter to go off to college. She's in this group for moms who like homeschool their kids or like parents who homeschool their kids. Is They're like talking about how they feel about their kids going off to college and they're like, oh, aren't you sad? I mean, aren't you worried about her? And she's like, no, like I finally get to have a life. Like I'm going to be happy. I get to do my own thing. And then we meet the daughter and like she's so sweet and she and her mom seem to have a really beautiful relationship. Her mom takes really good care of her. She gets around really well on her own, but she does have a lot of health issues as we see. But then all this really wild stuff starts happening. I can't even explain it all without spoiling anything, but the daughter ends up finding like a container of medicine that has her mom's name on it and not hers. But then later that night, her mom gives her one of these pills and she's like, I thought these were yours. So this sparks like this confusion and fear that maybe something isn't right with her mom and that she's been doing something to her this whole time. It's just really wild. I was like screaming, my neighbors reply like, what is wrong with this girl? But it was so good. I mean, it's not like the best, but it's so thrilling. You can't even like stop watching it. Like I was like, what is happening? I was so floored by it. And the acting is incredible. The storyline, just the thrill aspect of it. Definitely highly recommend if you need a good thriller because I was blown away. <laughs> the storyline reminds me a lot of everything everything just like that concept so it's really well done i love sarah paulson she's such an incredible actor and i just admire her so much and she's just kind of like taken over 2020 and like probably 2021 as well <laughs> okay now we're into movies that i've rewatched recently and that is okay so i've rewatched the hobbit and the lord of the rings y'all know how much those movies mean to me by now but I'm not gonna go into details, obviously, but I did rewatch those. I'm obsessed with them. I also just recently rewatched the half of it, which I never really talked about on here, but I love that movie. We're following this girl named Ellie Chu, is kind of crushing on this girl named Aster. People kind of abuse her knowledge and abuse her as a person. They bully her a lot. She like runs this little like train station for her dad because he wasn't able to get a higher job because of his accent and he didn't understand English very well. It's kind of, it's just, it's really sad. <laughs> her teacher really wants her to go to college, but Ellie's kind of like, no, I have to stay and work with my dad and all that stuff. So one day, this boy comes and tells Ellie that he wants her to help him write a letter to Aster, who also Ellie has a crush on, but Ellie agrees because he'll pay, and then they end up becoming really good friends, and then she kind of starts while well, writing these texts and like these letters and stuff. She starts to fall even harder for Aster, and it's just Aster gets kind of caught up in the middle of this situation, and it's just so cute. It's so well done, the acting is beautiful, the characters, it's a really lovely story about platonic relationships and just finding yourself and just loving who you are. I don't know, I loved it a lot. It's one of my favorite new movies and it's on Netflix as well, so I definitely recommend that one. And then, okay, my current obsession right now is National Treasure. <laughs> Y'all, I love National Treasure, I love it. Like, I mean, it's so weird because I remember I watched the second one before I saw the first one and then like all these years went by and I wasn't that into it, but recently, last year or so, I've been obsessed. Like, I can watch them on repeat. These past two weeks, I've only been watching those movies. I rewatched the first one like two times, finally went back and watched the second one after like two years of not watching it for some reason. And then I realized how much I love the second one, so I rewatched the first one like two more times, and the second one, it's just, I'm obsessed. You desperately need the third one because the third one, 
I would totally audition to be like their teenage daughter and I think it'd be perfect. I actually made this photo edit, I'll put it like in here somewhere. But I made a photo edit where I cropped myself into a, like a picture with them pretending it was a family photo. Like that's how obsessed I am and how much I desperately want to be in these movies. I love the history, the writing, it feels like it could have been possible. Like if I went and tried doing all this, it could happen. <laughs> I just love that about the movies, the writing, the action, a little bit of romance, like it doesn't consume the movie. And the history, I think the history part is so cool. Like if you know any books that are similar to National Treasure, just like that writing, like I've already read a lot of the, like Robert Langdon ones or whatever, like Da Vinci Code and all that, like that doesn't do it for me. But I need more National Treasure in my life and I hope we get the third movie eventually. I'll audition and like, they're waiting for me. They need an actor for the daughter and I think we would make a great family. Okay, that's it. <laughs> that is everything I've been watching recently. Let me know down below any of your favorite recent shows and movies, anything like that. If you like this video, be sure to give it a nice little thumbs up. If you want to keep following me on this booktube journey, please subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Gobble. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you soon with another video. Bye!